everybody. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a coconut dequoise. So a dequoise is a meringue style cake. Um, it falls in the egg foam category. Um, we're only using egg whites for this so it's going to be a really springy really elastic cake um, with a lot of chew in it because of the high amount of protein. Um, this is a much more of a European style cake um, as opposed to a high fat American cake. Um, this, the only fat that we have coming in is actually from the almond flour that is used in this recipe. Um, so I'm going to start out with uh, my egg whites. Let me see if I can tilt. The okay, so I have my egg whites in the bowl. Remember that the enemy of egg whites is fat of any kind. So um, you want to make sure that your bowl is really clean, the whip is clean, you don't have any traces of egg yolks in here um, because otherwise we're not going to get full volume of our whites. Um, I have the sugar in the recipe is divided so I have the smaller amount of sugar um, is going to be added to the whites but remember that we don't want to um, we don't want to add that too early because it can make your whites syrupy and it actually takes longer for those to whip up. Okay, so I'm going to start this on medium speed, and when it gets foamy, I'll add in my sugar. Okay, so it's foamy from top to bottom, so with the mixer running on low to medium speed, I'm going to gradually add my sugar in, and then I'll continue whipping this until I'm just under stiff peaks. down because I have a little sugar that's um, just on the edges of the bowl and I want to make sure that that gets fully incorporated and dissolved. Um, the sugar in, uh, in with the egg whites, remember, is acting as a stabilizer so that when I'm folding my dry ingredients in, they can stand up to be manipulated uh, a little bit better and they won't deflate as quickly. While this is coming up to um, just under stiff, stiff peaks, I'm going to be sifting together my almond flour, my second portion of sugar, and my cake flour. consistency of my egg whites I always stop the mixer and I use the whip so that I can really get an accurate check um, I'm never just judging by what I see in the bowl so I can just give these a little stir and then I'm gonna turn this upside down so right now I'm not getting anything standing up so right now we're at soft peaks but I have started to get some good volume so um, it shouldn't take too long for these to finish well-developed tracks from the whip. So this is exactly where I want to have it. So that little peak um, just gives that nice gentle curl over. That's exactly what I want to see. Um, so now I'm just going to add my vanilla and mix that in on low speed because I don't want to over whip these now. So I just want to get that vanilla incorporated. Okay, 
so I can finish off the rest of this by hand, uh, just so I don't have that. Okay. So um, I'm just gonna uh, fold this in um, with my spatula. All right, try and get you guys back in there so you can see the bowl. Challenges. So beautiful, nice, glossy whites. That sugar is really giving them a nice um, gloss and keeping them um, from starting to get that um, sort of separated appearance that egg whites can have. I am really sideways. Oh well. Um, okay, so my whites are good. I'm gonna set those aside. And then I'm just going to, um, I have my coconut flakes here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, just gently uh, incorporate that into my sifted ingredients. Um, the reason that I'm doing that is because I wanna have one addition of dries that I'm trying to fold in. Um, and I wanna make sure that they're com completely mixed together so that I'm not folding in my almond flour mixture and then I'm folding in my coconut as well because Every time I'm I'm agitating those egg whites, um, I am overworking them, and air pockets are uh, disintegrating, and I can end up with not enough volume. Um, remember when we're doing egg foam cakes, we usually have little to no chemical leaveners, which is the situation that we have here, no chemical leaveners at all. So our only leavening is from the air that is incorporated during the mixing process. So anything I do to damage that right now is gonna give me a denser finished product, okay? So I have my uh, dry ingredients combined here. So now in one step, I'm going to add those dries into my bowl of egg whites. Lost a little bit there. I really wish I could get this so you guys could see in the bowl a little bit better. There we go. Progress. Okay, so I'm folding this so um, running that spatula around the bottom of the bowl and coming into the middle and rotating the bowl so that I am getting every part of this. You wanna be very deliberate with your actions and you wanna be very conservative with the amount of times that we are uh, manipulating this so we're going to be really efficient the less time that we can um, spend folding this batter in the more volume I'm going to have remaining in this remember that our almond flour does contain fat so every time I manipulate this batter when it's in contact with that almond flour I'm losing volume so this is uh, what my finished folding looks like. I still see a little bit of streakiness with um, my egg whites, but I'm going to be spreading it in a half sheet pan with an offset spatula. So I know that that action is going to help um, get the rest of those whites to sort of dissolve in. Um, if my whites are over whipped and they sort of start to get chunky, that's when you actually have a really hard time getting them to incorporate um, because they're, they're stiff and they're so hard. So remember that you're only whipping those whites um, to under stiff peaks. Okay, so now I'm gonna um, spread this in my pan. So I have a half sheet pan just lined with parchment, no spray on this. Um, we don't want any kind of fat um, any more than, than we already have in our, in our mixture coming into contact with this. So just like when I was folding, I wanted to be uh, very efficient with my movements. So using that offset spatula to spread this around. 
I like to get it over in the corners. And then what I'm doing is, oops, I keep my spatula at the same level so that it pushes the batter, anything that's too high, uh, it pushes the batter into areas that are lower. And I'm just running the tip of my spatula along the edge of the pan, touching it there so that helps me stay a little steadier. So it's kind of like when we are frosting a cake that um, we're pushing and pulling that batter back and forth. So we definitely need to have even thickness on this, um, especially since with we have this high amount of egg whites. Um, in a spot that is too thin, it will bake very crunchy. And we wanna make sure that we have a, a chewy consistency, not crispy. Making sure that your corners are an even thickness as well. Those are gonna bake the fastest. Um, so we need to make sure that those aren't too thin. Okay, so that is my finish to pause um, batter. This is gonna go in a 350 degree oven. And the way I'm gonna check for doneness on this, you'll see it start to get a really nice golden brown um, because of the high amount of sugar that's gonna caramelize. Um, but it's gonna form a really thick crust on the top. Um, so the way that we're, I'm gonna check for doneness on that, I'm gonna check this at about 25 minutes. Um, I'm gonna take a paring knife and I'm gonna peel back the um, top crust that's formed. And with the tip, I'm just gently going to um, press the interior of the cake and when I see that spring back I know that it's done if when I press it stays depressed a little bit um, I know that it's not fully baked so you need to keep it in a little bit longer okay so that was the dequaz I uh, hope that was helpful and I will see you guys on the next step